The present and the future of aviation explained in Fly, in partnership with Eurocontrol. At Prostyov in the Czech Republic, not far from the Austrian and Slovakian borders, a glimpse at what could be the future of aviation. Their unmanned aerial vehicles, or UAVs, operated by the 102nd Reconnaissance Battalion of the Czech Air Force. With technological advances, it's thought these drones could play a crucial part in the development of tomorrow's commercial air transport. At the moment, UAVs play a predominantly military role. Packed with sensors, cameras and transmitting equipment, they're piloted by remote control from the ground. Their main job right now is reconnaissance, but they're also finding their way increasingly into civilian life, like firefighting, policing and monitoring road traffic. But does it mean commercial planes of the future will be ploughing the skies without a pilot on board? We put the question to an expert at a workshop on innovation in air traffic control near Paris. We certainly can expect airplanes without pilots. Uh, from a technological point of view, it's already feasible. But you also have to think about the public. Will the public accept an airplane that's flown without a pilot? So I think it will take quite some time before such a thing will actually fly. What we can expect is uh, perhaps cargo planes that could, uh, uh, let's say, carry uh, freights all over Europe, also over the Alps, uh, without pilot, because they, they fly a certain fixed pattern and that's quite feasible. At the experimental center in Bretigny-sur-Orge, engineers are studying how controllers work. They analyze every task, every blink of the eye, to test new tools and new technologies. Their main aim, to find out how man and machine interact. Things are changing for the air traffic controller of the future. Their job is undergoing a physical, ergonomic and technological revolution. And it's here at Bretigny where scientists are developing the new approaches to tools and computers which are driving the change. We work a lot here on collaboration between controllers. You've seen the paper strips which the controllers tend to use, swap around, share amongst themselves. You can make them disappear. But the question is, what is represented in terms of collaboration between controllers, for example, in allocating slots? So we need to replace these strips of paper. The problem is not to lose what they represent and not to lose the flexibility they give the controller. Paper has particular characteristics which are not always easy to reproduce in a computer. We're experimenting with the idea of a shared work area where, just like with strips of paper, just like rolling your chair from one place to another, you can choose to concentrate on a small area and the other can do the rest. Or conversely, you can move over and take on a section of his work. And as the demarcation lines disappear, you can see that the work will become effectively shared between the two. In London, they're working on control systems which wouldn't look out of place in a sci-fi movie. It's electronic interfaces like this which are exploring ever more advanced ways of allowing the human element of ATC to access the information they need to keep the skies safe. We take an area of the screen that we're interested in, okay, we just put our hand over it, turn it over, and there, you, there it is. You're able to see it in three-dimensional detail. We have three aircraft, okay, here and here, and these blue things are navigation points. We can also take a look at planes landing and taking off. Here we have one plane on approach while another takes off. That allows us to decide exactly where, uh, uh, exactly which aircraft are at, at risk of collision, and it allows us, it allows two controllers to sit there and discuss areas of interest between themselves, without having to uh, uh, decipher numbers on the screen. You can actually see the uh, perspective directly in front of you. You can pick it up, look at it from any direction. 
contact one to eight diesels. Back in the present, some technologies are almost ready to be implemented, like the Airborne Separation Assistance System, or ASAS, which permits aircraft in the approach phase to keep their distance from each other without the continuous guidance of controllers. Pilots see the other planes thanks to a new instrument in the cockpit. Here, for example, we have the situation of an runway, so an, an airfield where the aircraft are approaching and normally the controller has to tell each individual aircraft how it has to fly. Then you see that the controller tells a pilot, can you identify an aircraft in front of you? And yes, please keep a distance to that aircraft. And there you see the green lines in between. And if such an aircraft is following the other, almost like you see the same distance all the time or the same time in between, then uh, the controller has only to give instructions to the first one and the second one he doesn't have to look at anymore. And it can be done even with more aircraft. Here you see one aircraft which is guided by the controller and two aircraft that are simply following each other in the same distance and it is the pilot that makes sure that he stays all the time at the same position with respect to the first aircraft. Technological innovation in air traffic control is central to tackling the challenge of the huge growth in air traffic forecast for the coming years. And so is a new approach to the management of airspace, already planned with the development of the single European sky. Traffic has been growing in the last 20 years at a 4% uh, average. We are expecting that this will continue in the, in the next 15 years. Today we have uh, 10 million flights uh, a year, and by 2020 we expect to have uh, 16 million. Well, it means that uh, we have a European issue that requires European solutions. Normally everybody would think that the problem will be capacity. By the way, this is a major challenge. But it is not only a question of uh, capacity, it's a question about safety and also it's a question about having an aviation system that it is environmentally friendly. Now, thinking on the future, I think this European approach to business is a fundamental issue. And we will see this, uh, especially in a close, close coordination between Eurocontrol and the European Commission. The aviation industry has already embarked on an increasingly busy tomorrow, posing ever more challenges for the politicians and those charged with keeping the skies safe. But as air travel continues to soar, it's possible that the technology and politics of future flight is already experiencing a new dawn.